item first on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Move to approve the agenda of the September 18, 2018 regular meeting as presented. Second. Is there a motion and a second? Are there a motion and a second? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next is the approval of the consent agenda items. Move to approve the consent agenda items as presented. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor of saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have public participation. Okay. We'll move on to the report of the superintendent, Dr. Flay. Hello. Good, Good evening. Um, in your packet, I will point out, I'm going to kind of move through some of these because we have other people doing some of the pieces. Um, I will point out in your packet, that we do have some safety reports from this month, but this past month, we've done fire earthquake, a fire earthquake drill, and a tornado drill. Um, the St. Genevieve High School Hall of Fame induction ceremony will take place on Friday, October 5th. Um, our inductees this year are Herbert C. Follert from the class of 1954. Mr. Follert was a House, Missouri House of Representative from 1983 to 1994. He is an area business owner, a civic leader, and has a leading role in promoting tourism in downtown St. Genevieve and Missouri. Our second inductee is Rick Boyer, class of 1964. He is a professional musician, performed and toured in bands like um, the Mandrell Sisters, Eddie Rabbit, and Bill Swan. He performed and recorded with many legends of country music, including George Jones, Vince Gill, Willie Nelson, and many others. Uh, both Mr. Follert and Mr. Boyer will be in attendance on October 5th. I think they're slated to arrive in the high school commons at 9 a.m. Uh, with a lunch here on campus, and throughout the day, they will be addressing the students and meeting with students and taking tours. And then the official induction ceremony will be at 5.30 in the Performing Arts Center. So the community is invited, and we would love to see as many people there as we can. Does anyone have any questions on that ceremony? OK. Um, I'm then going to turn it over to Mrs. Toombs. She's going to do a technology update for us. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. Hi. All right, so our mission in the tech department is Provide technology to create success at St. John R2. And uh, we have several goals that we uh, try to maintain year after year. Uh, our main goal is um, with the, if your infrastructure doesn't work, then you can't have anything technology related that actually works. So we strive hard to um, make our infrastructure is in place. We provide the tools and resources necessary, um, provide communication tools, professional development. And we uh, try to keep them within our budget as um, allowed with our uh, purchases. So our backbone is we maintain all the switches, wireless and wiring in the district, and we add whatever we need to, when we need to, where we need to. Um, our bandwidth comes through the Big River Telephone System. They use the Charter Spectrum. That's a change from uh, in the past. We were on at t and now we're at Charter. Our content filtering is SEPA Filter and Go Guardian. And Bill Guardian gives the teachers the um, ability to um, keep track of what the students are doing on the Chromebooks a little more than, than uh, just um, our regular filter. Uh, we try to maintain a safe environment for our students, and um, we have to do that to keep in compliance with our E-rate funding. We also have door and car readers and video surveillance that we keep in, in uh, line. We also have an off-site backup system for all of our critical systems. The teachers in both elementaries this year received um, new laptops, and they will be getting projectors as time allows throughout those two, bu <coughs> those two buildings. <coughs> Excuse me. We did receive new Chromebooks this year, K uh, through five, 5 through 12, and we were able to repurpose all the good ones down to K4, and we appreciate the board for the support for that. We also have the Google's Nexus tablets in K1. 
And we do have projection devices in every room and any place that um, we feel that we need more. So we add those as, as we go along. We also maintain many softwares here in the district. Um, we are a member of Google. We uh, have Google Classroom, Moodle, any other learning management systems that the teachers want to use. We don't really specialize on one of those. Whatever they feel comfortable with using. We also help maintain and support the video broadcasting class. The Library Media Center, and if she needs help in there, we go ahead and support any of that. And uh, if she needs any additional hardware or software that enhances the learning process, we um, try and accommodate that as well. We also maintain the website system, Destiny, which is in the library, Overdrive, which is the online um, books that you can read on the Chromebooks. Again, we're a member of Google, Google Apps for Education. We have the United Streaming Discovery Education System. And the Smart Montage we house here, which is our online video services here in the district. Uh, with our goal three, our communication tools, we um, provide email for our teachers and students. Uh, we also get the Google Classroom, that's a collaboration software that the teachers can use with the students. Uh, we have shared documents, spreadsheets, and presentations. And then we have our web page. We switched to a new system this year through Actigy. And it incorporates a website, our social media accounts, our new school app, which allows us to have push notifications, um, a calling system, and a texting system all rolled into one. Uh, we also have maintained Power School. I believe this is our 12th year on Power School. Um, we uh, use that to keep in touch with our parents with grades and with um, any fees that they may have. We also did an online collection system this year to enroll. And um, we work through some bugs there. And um, we'll keep um, building on to that as we go along. We also have announcements on TVs and all the schools. Uh, we keep WebLink in line, which is our online check stub system for the staff. And we have file bound for um, district files and some other information that uh, we also need throughout the year. We have the SNAP program, which the nurses use. Uh, we have, of course, they have some accounting software for all things financial. An inventory system, we track all of the um, Chromebooks and the teacher computers through that. We have a system called Kaseya where um, we push out things to our Windows computers like uh, software updates, antivirus, <coughs> and it's also our workforce system. We also have an alumni and sports records system that uh, you may have seen down in the gym. And then our fourth goal is to provide some PD. And uh, this year we rounded up an EMIT session last year. And we started a new cohort this year. It focuses on hands-on instruction with integration of technology. And our teachers are able to receive up to 12 hours of college credit through Missouri Baptist. We also usually run a boot camp in the summer. This past summer we ran one on HyperDocs, which is a new and upcoming fabulous thing that uh, teachers are learning how to use. And we usually try to cover a hot topic in this year, which was HyperOps, and they did receive college credit for that as well. And we have a tech budget that with the people of St. Jane County and our wonderful administration and our board lets us do the things that we do, and we try to keep it within our means. <laughs> And we hate to say no to any teacher request, so if we can provide it, we do. And then we also try to look to the future for what's next and how to stay on budget with it. So we appreciate everything that you let us do uh, with our budget. Does anybody have any questions so far about what we do? I can imagine all the things that I just saw. How do you keep up with all that? Well, we just, we just do it. <laughs> I especially like the, the webcam for the games now and things. That's good stuff. 
You can watch wherever you are. <coughs> Mr. Slice and his uh, crew really taking that on and do a very fine job with, with doing that uh, online broadcast. Yeah, that's great. I just watched it last Friday night. It was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy, with the, the, new, the new website, the new look and everything, and <coughs> navigating is different. Is it, I mean, some things that some people said it's hard to find things, they're not used to, is it? Is there any changes or is it gonna, we gonna? Oh no, we're gonna evolve that as okay. we go. We, um, yeah. it's, it is a totally different platform. Um, we don't have things quite the way we want them, but we're trying to drive the, the parents to the schools that they want to, that they need to go to instead of just relying on everything at the district level. We'd like to see them go more towards the schools so they can see the news and, and the uh, live updates and the live feeds that they're putting out through the schools. So it'll be growing and changing as, as the year goes on. So we're still working with that. Well, we just want you to know how, how we appreciate you and what an amazing person you are. Oh, thank you all. And your and and my crew, yes. You can't do anything without no. them. They're, they're a wonderful person. Just to let you know. I, I've had that. some feedback on the website, too, that it's just not as easy to find things either. So I don't know if there's something we could do. but. I can't, I mean, I'll be honest, I can't find anything either. Um, and I, don't, I haven't checked in a while because I have a football schedule now, but usually I go out and I try to put schedules in my phone from the website. And have those been updated on a calendar somewhere? Yes, I mean, um, Mr. Nix has been updating those okay. on a calendar. You probably have to go to the high school to find it. Okay. We're trying to send people to the school that it associates with. Oh, so good. check the high yeah. school. Coming from, schedules, coming from a parent's perspective, I, I had to jump in and try to figure it out as well. And if you just go to the main page and click on Explore, you're exploring the district level. If you go in and choose the school, it takes you to the school, and then you hit Explore, and then it pulls up the school's options. Yeah, it hasn't always been that way. That, that's exactly right, and that changes what's throwing people off. I explored, and I went every school. I'm done. <laughs> So I can't even find the menu, yeah. Karen. <laughs> but I think some of the people well, who are looking for sporting events may have children in the elementary, so they're not going to click on the high school to, sure. to look right, at Right, that's kind of where we're heading with that. If you just want high school stuff, it's in the high school. If you want elementary, you go to that elementary school. Okay. It's just different. It'll get, it'll get easier as, as yeah, you Yeah, I mean, every time we go, there's more content sometimes. Yeah. Well, I appreciate the principal sending us that stuff too. <laughs> and the key with the website is when you go to a school, whatever page you're on, the explore key is what you're looking for. Explore. Okay. The explore button. Yeah, and then everything pops up. Hopefully. Or hopefully. <laughs> or we're working on it. That's where it's supposed to be. We add it all the time. Yes. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you, Nancy. Well, and I just want to share Nancy and Jason and Brandon and their summer crew. They do an amazing job yes. in that limited amount of time. So what they do is impressive. Um, and well, I hope they know how much we appreciate it. Yes. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I believe next uh, we have Dr. Taylor. He's going to talk about the PD Day on August 31st. Um, our PD days were both in August this year. Uh, usually we have one in early August and one in September. Um, I've scheduled a meeting with the Professional Development Committee to review um, the surveys that we sent out from August 10th and August 31st. Uh, I've, I've reviewed it myself and I feel like the lunch on August 31st was a highlight. <laughs> um, we wanted to try something different this year and since Jordan Mueller is new, um, and, and comes highly recommended. Um, we had her prepare muscacholi for lunch with green beans and an olive salad. And I just told her some dessert, but she came up with, I don't know what those things were, but they were fantastic. They were so <laughs> cobblers. Cobblers. cobblers, three different flavors of cobblers. And um, so we, we have fantastic feedback on that. Um, there was good feedback on Several of the sessions, we tried to offer five sessions, five breakout sessions to choose from for each one. And then of course we had Alice training and some Mant training thrown in there. Um, overall, I feel like it was a good experience. Um, there's, there's always things we can do, um, <coughs> options we can offer that are going to 
allow our teachers to improve their craft, and we're going to continue to search for those things. So. Okay, and I believe we're at the highlight of the superintendent's report, and that would be the building principals. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to go first? I'm going to go first tonight. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm going to wear a couple of hats tonight. I'm going to combine Bloom Sales report with our report, and we'll go a little bit back and forth maybe. Um, so Mrs. Zussman sends her regards, but she couldn't make it, so I'm going to share for both of us. So um, we're going to begin with this Bloomsdale slide. She want, really wanted to highlight uh, two key pieces on this, that the beginning of the school year kicked off pretty great for them, and they had a large kindergarten class, and her staff did a really great job with all hands on deck. They went out and greeted kids at the buses on the first day, not just kindergarten, but a lot of teachers greeted all the children, but a lot of extra helping hands rallied and helped kindergarten for many days. And I have to say that's true for our building too. There's all hands on deck for lunch for quite a while, especially maybe some other areas, but mostly lunch. Lots of milk opening and ketchup opening. <laughs> and we were somewhere, Lori and I were somewhere, and they had little squirt ketchup bottles, and we're like, Oh my God, why didn't we ever think about that? So we're going to talk to Mrs. Mueller and maybe we won't have so many ketchup packets to open in the future. But anyway, so she just wanted to share that um, they had a pretty good kick off. And again, leadership, both her staff and my staff did, uh, on August 31st, did our Leader and Me aligning up with academics training. So we both developed an action team in our buildings and our teachers are beginning their leadership binders where the students will be setting goals and wildly wildly important goals and uh, it'll have a section about themselves their goals and their progress in that so that's underway right now in both buildings um, these are just a few pictures she wanted to include of fun stuff going on the break the picture in the bottom I don't think that's her new student breakfast I think that's on another slide but just all the programs and things going on around the building and the, and the greeting of children on the first days. Um, she had a new student breakfast and so did we in our building, so we'll kind of talk collectively about that. Mrs. Rowland had a new student breakfast and I think Dr. Taylor joined, didn't you? Yeah, and they did a team builder and um, just was really a good a good thing. Um, we've always done new student breakfast, but we're expanding it a little bit, and they had a good time that day. Um, both her building and my building did these trainings together, which is nice. So you'll see the pictures in the high school cafeteria. Thanks, Mr. Haney, for always letting us use that, and the technology department does a great job setting it all up for us. And so we had our big, large training with our leader and me, Covey folks, and then Mrs. Keeker and Mrs. Foff, or Ms. Foff, have done an amazing job getting our K-3 teachers trained up for all the dyslexia updates. Actually, kindergartens is only October 30th, but first through third. There's many new assessments they have to give, especially in first grade. They have seven alone in first grade. So the teachers need, needed a lot of PD on that to um, learn the background of it, be ready to give the assessments, be ready to analyze the assessments and figure out, well, what do we do if we see any red flags? So Mrs. Keeker and Ms. Lynette Foff put in endless hours planning and then training the teachers. So and here's a few more pictures of Lori's building. She said her preschool pumpkin patch was a big hit. Big shout out to Mr. Kenny Rapp. He helped with that quite a bit and you can see in the bottom right or far right picture, they really grew huge pumpkins. So mm -hmm. it was really a lot of fun and a tradition they're going to keep going. And Mrs. Kreitler in our building has a pumpkin patch as well. But I don't have any pictures of pumpkins yet, so I don't know. How <laughs> to Ours may not be. <laughs> we'll talk about that in October, okay? <laughs> um, and then here is our building. You know, that's an old picture, but I just couldn't take it out because it's one of my very favorite pictures. It's a picture from Mrs. Beckerman's. Um, first grade class and it just sums up um, the sum of the whole and how I think many of our teachers feel our children are one collective awesome entity so that's a great picture I just couldn't bear to let go of yet and then I want to kind of give a shout out to Joyce Jokerst and Stephanie Dury in our office 
So they had an idea to make a chalk wall and change it up. So this is already our September message, so I'll put our chalk wall on each month. So, because Mrs. Drury loves to draw that up, that's her therapy after a tough day. <laughs> Um, so a few pictures of learning leadership. I mean, we have hundreds to choose from, so I just picked a couple that I thought captured what our big rocks are this year. So the picture up in the front, up at the top, you'll see two big things that we have a lot of going on, and that's technology. Thanks to you guys and Mrs. Toombs, we have one-to-one -one in our buildings, and it is very rare to not walk down a hallway and see kids everywhere, all over the room learning around the room on their Chromebooks and in, together with partners independently. And then alternative seating. You know, they're not sitting at little desks anymore all the time. They're all over the room in, in all sorts of alternative settings. So you'll see quite a bit of that in our building. In the bottom picture, you see a lot of team building. The teachers spend the first few weeks of school building a family. They spend a lot of time with their students in small group things, doing team builders, and getting to know you things uh, and laying the foundation for a great year. So lots of good team building went on our first weeks. And there's a group of kids, um, they had to stack the cups and get it all just right. So, and it was a science lesson as well. All right, so we um, had a t-shirt this year in our building, not follow a leader, but be a leader. So there's a picture of our staff in our new be a leader shirts, which I think sums it up. And then um, we, everybody by and large wore either a Lindsay shirt or stripes or chevron to remember Mrs. Lindsay Roth. So there's a picture of our kindergarten team in their Lindsay shirts. We have positive office referrals this year so far. We've had six already. And one of them is even extra special. She was also nominated for doing the right thing. So Mackenzie Knight up in the upper left corner uh, is also going to be celebrated on September 24th up in St. Louis at the Doing the Right Thing event. She um, helped a classmate who was choking in the cafeteria. She quickly, she paid attention, she noticed that something wasn't right and she immediately got a teacher. I mean, just got a teacher and got help fast. And um, it was a scary moment, but it, it all was okay. Um, Mrs. Thompson was on duty. You met Mrs. Thompson tonight, and she was just about to do the Heimlich, and Mackenzie coughed up, coughed, and she was okay, but it was a little, little scary. So uh, Mrs. Faith nominated for Mackenzie for doing the right thing. So we'll hear more about that next October after her event. And then also we have Nate Womack, Jaden Miner, Brady Marshall, Millie Huffman, who is also the Twitter fairy, <laughs> and uh, Mia Caps. Uh, all received positive office referrals for going above and beyond in some sort of behavior or kind way. So, and so Millie was bestowing the golden hashtag that day. <laughs> so I didn't use her power school picture, I grabbed that one. All right, and we had a great grandparents week last week on, um, for third grades on September 10th through 13th. We had 121 grandparents come. So that, that's a lot of grandparents. And we had a great day and we leaderized it. The students uh, took care of refreshments, decorated the tables, greeted in the lobby, helped with photos, uh, took, took grandparents on building tours, and all in all, really a great day. And the cafeteria staff provided some really awesome meals that the grandparents loved. And um, there on the day of our new student breakfast, you can see we had a lot of new students. I meant to get the number. This is getting, you remember, it was 50 plus. Yeah, lots of new kids this year to St. John Elementary. And so we had a student breakfast with Mrs. Greminger. We had donuts and milk and visited with them and they got to sit in groups and tell a little bit about themselves. And um, also there are new faculty that you met tonight. I, I threw those folks into. Mrs. Hilbert couldn't be here tonight, but you were able to meet the others. And there you go. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> um, it's amazing to me now that uh, I've changed positions, how much behind the scenes work there is in order to make the first few days of school successful. And I'm very fortunate because I have, I have a whole team of people that did that for me, and while, while I stood back and watched, because these guys really knew what they were doing. 
in the first few weeks of school, we had an awful lot going on, launching into lead groups already and, and tutoring. And of course, we had new student breakfast as well and open house and all of these things that we do sort of as team builders to make sure that, that we're all jiving together, but also to make sure that the students are, are ready to go and that they feel welcome too. The pictures that you see here on the left, this is uh, with our new shirt this year. There are about three different versions of that, sh of that picture. Uh, I think that was taken on a Friday afternoon, and we took different iterations of it depending on who showed up and when they left. So that's, that's the one that includes the most of On the right is something really neat that happens on Friday mornings. Uh, before we send the kids off to their classes, uh, after they've, they've been hanging out in the gym, you know, getting off the buses or coming in <coughs> off from the cars or walking in, they, they go to the gym. Before we send them off, we, we have a group of girls stand up and lead us through a few cheers and chants, and then we all sing the school song before we start the school day on Friday morning. So I thought that was something nice that I wanted to share with you. We have kind of kind of jumped on the bandwagon um, and and are really focusing on how much we communicate outwards. Um, every bragging point, uh, we, we like to tweet it. We like to put it in the live feed. We like to put it in our news. And so what I've done for you here is just captured some of the tweets that have gone out. And the one that, that, that popped up there in color is just random, but I think it's also a good example of the kinds of things that we like to share. This is a young man just working on uniform in class, and his teacher thought that was cool and wanted to share it. Over there on the right are some of the hashtags and handles that we use, and, and I can say that it seems like every week we see a little bit more, and a little bit more, and a little bit more, which makes me really happy because I know we have so much to brag about. We too have already had some positive office referrals, um, six so far, uh, for, for various reasons, but there's a common theme here. Um, all six of these guys gave up time that they didn't have to in order to help out the office in one way or another. Maybe they were passing through at registration and we needed a job done, or maybe they were just waiting for their parents to get off work and we needed a job done. And these guys jumped in, volunteered, went above and beyond. And we really appreciate uh, that kind of helpful attitude that not only they have, but so many of our students have. But these guys, in particular, they received positive office referrals. So. We want to give a shout out to them. Also a shout out to Mrs. Stoll. She is uh, what you might commonly refer to as the feature teacher. Uh, we call it the Spotlight Award because we have kind of a rock star theme in our, in our motivation. Um, and you can see some of the nice things that folks have said there. I'll get out of the way so everyone can see. Ms. Stoll is our, our first Spotlight Award winner. Congratulations. Well deserved. And these are just a few of the comments we had. We had uh, multiple uh, nominations on this stole, all of which talked about dedication and going above and beyond and, and helping in multiple areas. So good job, congratulations. Also we had um, NJHS induction uh, just over the weekend. 51 inductees uh, added to the 20 something returning members. We're up to 70 some kids now. Uh, which is which is absolutely amazing. At that same induction ceremony, uh, Mrs. Huffman was named the staff member of honor, and Mrs. Hogan Miller was named the teacher of honor. So we want to congratulate those students, but also those teachers as well, and Mrs. Miss Stoll and Mrs. Pelican for putting together such a lovely ceremony. It really was a great, great evening and a, and a good time to recognize what we really should be about. Anyway, so that was that was wonderful, and I thank them for that. Thank you. Good evening. Um, we, like everybody else, we started the school year and really jumped right into it. And it's funny sometimes because so much happens and the staff and the students do an amazing job that it almost feels like you start in routine, but it also almost feels like you start flat because you're just going. And uh, this was a picture I took from the floor. You know, I'm one of those people that I get the privilege to go down there for our first Friday running of the halls. And when we got in there, it was just electric and, and powerful. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about cheerleaders here in a minute, but the number of um, girls that we have in the group, God, I'm drawing a total color guard. color guard, thank you very much. In our color guard, 
and our cheerleaders in our emeralds this year and the job that those organizations are doing is just absolutely phenomenal. So I grabbed this, some of you may recognize this if you're getting our daily announcements emailed to you. This is the background photo from that. I decided to go ahead and include that for a while. Um, catch you up over the summer a little bit. We had the NCAA All-American nominations. We had NCAA in to do a camp for our cheerleaders and it went unbelievably well. We had several nominations, as you can see there, and I'm also pleased to say those two ladies that are pictured, Carissa Holst and Tristan Arini, are both uh, NCAA All-American. They were selected. So it's a phenomenal award, and the job that Katie Diamond and Shelly Dallas have done with this squad, both in size and chemistry and in performance and technique, are absolutely amazing. So if you see that at the football game, uh, be sure to compliment them if you see them there. Uh, I wouldn't be without student success, and I wanted to go and feature these two, not because I was looking for a few uh, bonus points from my fellow associate, Dr. Mercer, <laughs> but these are our Rotary and uh, Elk Student of the Month, and I really, what impressed me about them, first of all, Clayton, I was glad to see that we were able to announce this, um, 36 on the ACT, no, perfect score, you know, I mean, I know, <laughs> exactly, a lot of us, think about, dream about, imagine what that would have been like. Uh, he has actually done it. But here's the other piece that I just think is so insanely impressive about this class. When you talk about character, and they're, they're so different. There's so much personality between these two individuals. Uh, 32. We've had classes where we can't get a 30 on our ACT. And our first two students of the month right out of the gate had a 32 and a 36. Absolutely amazing. And the other thing that I want to say about them, and I'm not just saying it because he's sitting in the room, but I say it all the time about our students at SJHS. We have great kids because we have great parents. And these two definitely embody that. So uh, I wanted you to be able to see them and congratulate them if you get a chance to see them out and about. But it really was, again, a great start to our year with them. Uh, along the lines, I wanted to do a preview because I know this is always a big deal. A few people follow this. Uh, we have a little event coming up called Homecoming. Our theme this year is game shows, and uh, basically those will be what floats will be about. Freshmen will be wipeout, sophomores will be deal or no deal, juniors will be family feud, and seniors will be wheel of fortune. Our spirit day is the big thing for y'all to remember on Friday. Well, actually on Wednesday, we have the uh, spirit rally at 7 o'clock and the uh, often heralded, competitive, sometimes too much powder puff football game at eight. And then on Friday, we will have, of course, the parade at five, the band booster chili supper between four and 6.30, so you don't even have to leave <coughs> campus that day. It is the one time that week I actually get to have dinner with my lovely wife. Um, <laughs> we will have a reunion for classes of 1968, which I believe was mentioned earlier. And uh, 7893 um, from 5.30 to 7 o'clock in the Peggy J. Johnson Gymnasium. And then, of course, the football game with coronation at halftime. And then on Saturday, for those of you who really want to see something interesting, we have the dance. So if you like to show up and please feel free to come. It is an amazing event. Um, and we also will have the parade. Uh, rain makeup day at 10 o'clock on that day. I bring that up because the last time, the time before last, we're kind of going on in every other, that we had a new superintendent was the first time in a long time that we had to go on. So I'm just saying, you know, if that happens, you're in very good company. Let me just leave it at that. So that's our upcoming homecoming. So everybody's heard the calendars, excuse me, seen it and is aware. Uh, I want to talk about something called reclassified data. You know we've been doing Dragon Fire for a while. And uh, one of the things I'm so proud of my staff about, I mean, I just cannot stop talking about this data and what they did and what, how they started this year. We don't do positive office referrals, but one of the things that our staff does do is they have the grade level teams and grade level meetings, and on Dragon Fire days, they'll call students in to talk to them. And sometimes they'll call them in to talk to them about, hey, this is what we need to do, this is what we need to improve. And sometimes they'll call them in and talk to them just to give them a shot in the arm and say, great job. Because to me, when that group of staff takes time out of their day to sit in a room with the student and just boast on them, it works wonders. Um, and kind of an example of how this is all progressing, what you see up there is our 9th, 10th, and 11th grade reclassified data from previous year, okay? 14, 14, and eight, meaning 
14 freshmen did not earn enough credits to become a sophomore. 14 sophomores did not earn enough credit that year to become a junior, and eight juniors did not earn enough credit to become seniors. What you see there in the four, three, and six was last year. Only four freshmen, only three sophomores, and only six juniors. And the thing about the upperclassmen that are so impressive is you have to remember, once they get reclassified as a freshman, it's very likely, because we still consider them on track, we still say you can get there, it's very likely that they're reclassified throughout every year because they will always be that one year behind, so they'll fill in as. So you can really see the difference in those numbers and the difference in what my staff has been able to accomplish in working with students and putting them students first. And, just, and what I really like is as we've gone through this process, um, just the new ideas that are starting to come from it, some things that are already being proposed that we could work with advisory to really start working with students, especially those seniors, to make sure we can keep every kid on track for graduation. It's very impressive, and so I wanted to boast on my staff and the start that they did and all the hard work that they've put into it, because truly without them, that doesn't happen. And you can see that everybody combined last year was still not what our freshmen and sophomores have been. So just incredibly impressive for them. Great job for them thinking outside the box and making it happen. Um, and the last one, and I know I, I took up a lot of her time tonight that I owe her for now because she could have been out of here 25 minutes ago. But you guys as a board know that from somewhere around November, December on, every month just about, I get to include amazing things that our FCCLA does in my board report. But unfortunately, I don't think she ever gets to hear Dr. Etherton those things that I say about her and her program and the leadership skills that those kids are bringing into that and that they're being taught and all the great projects that they're doing, the leadership they demonstrate for our school, the excellent programs that they're putting on for our school from assemblies um, to guest speakers coming in and just all that work and what they, how they represent us out in not only our community but neighboring communities when they visit and do competitions in other schools and down in state and the officers and just you know I can go on and on because you hear it just about every month but I wanted her to have to hear it and know that that's the way we view our FCCLA program and the wonderful job uh, Dr. Etherton does with our FACTS program so I asked her, made her I should say and the students <laughs> stay for this part because they are here tonight because they would like, I think, an opportunity to thank you for what you've been able to do in the National Leadership Conference in Atlanta, Georgia. So if you would, please. Thanks, please. Okay. 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 These three are gonna take care of it because they're well trained and ready to go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, my name is Emily App. I am a regional officer for FCCLA in Going to the National Leadership Conference as an officer was a great opportunity because I got to meet other regional officers and bounce ideas off of each other and meet people from Alaska and attend all these different workshops about stuff I could do to get more involved in SCCLA and help our memberships. So just want to thank you guys for allowing us to do that. Hi, my name is Haley Rogers and I really thank you so much for supporting us and going to Atlanta. It was so much fun. I had a couple of favorite things. Um, one, it was we had these pens that we could trade and it was like of our state. And we just got like so many different pens from so many different people and being able to meet so many different people and having that opportunity was really amazing. And we also got like a lot of public speaking experience, so it's really fun. Hi, I'm Lexi Roba and I just wanna say thank you for supporting us in this because it's a really amazing opportunity. We get to meet a lot of people from all around the country, really, and compare schools, compare organizations, and it really shows us how lucky we are to be in this district, especially. And we get, like they said, a lot of workshops and experiences and learn new things. So it really is an amazing opportunity, so thank you. Within the community, or, or, or even talk to us. It's amazing. We're so happy that 
we are able to do this right. The two girls are a great product. And they represent our school. Yeah, well. absolutely. We appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Riley. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and that, from all of us, that concludes our principal's reports. Thank you. Thank you. You were talking about uh, Mrs. Stoll. Miss Stoll. Miss Stoll. Miss Stoll. <laughs> she is an amazing person. Not only in school, at work, too. At the other work. <laughs> we love you, Aaron. <laughs> okay. That concludes my report. Well, then we'll move on to the unfinished business. And first is the emergency procedures. Dr. Bailey, you want to left? Well, I, this is pretty simple for me because whoever did it before me did a fantastic job. <laughs> 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 well, thank you. Yeah. So really, the updates that I made are personnel. There were some minor wording changes on about 10 different pages. Um, I updated student numbers, staff numbers, um, and then there was some admin shuffling. And along with the admin shuffling um, comes responsibilities when there is an emergency. And so we, we talked through that um, and assigned people where we thought they would best fit. Uh, the first 15 pages just explains the plan. Um, <coughs> gives you a general overview of terminology, um, and then the remaining 108 pages uh, walks you through what we're going to do when certain things happen. Uh, well, let me see if I can find everything from bomb threat, uh, civil disturbances, fire, hazardous materials, hostage intruder, severe weather, tornado, traumatic injury. <coughs> Um, there's sections for each one's, one of those things, um, and it talks about how we're going to handle it as a district. That covers the 123-page document, and then behind that, we have the individual building plans. I think those are separate documents in, in the packet in Google Classroom, but each building is, then goes through um, how they're going to handle emergency situations. Um, and their plan is actually uploaded into the Quick Access app which everyone has on their phones, um, and then we're able to ac that access that information um, wherever we need it, whenever we need it. Uh, so the Quick Access app is um, really handy. Uh, in an emergency situation, it's going to be invaluable to have that information at the touch of a finger. Uh, they are going through some changes. Um, Hopefully it'll be a little easier. Right now we have to send updates to them. They're, they're trying to make it more manageable for us so that we can update it as, as we need to. You know, if somebody gets moved around or if somebody leaves the district, it, we're able to update that unilaterally rather than having the buildings contact me and then me contact them and then having to wait for that, that lag. So um, that's the emergency operations plan. Um, if you have any questions uh, as you look through it, it is a big document, and then the, the building documents are not <laughs> short either. <laughs> Just to let everyone know, we, we get the packet usually a week before, so we get to read this. And if we have any questions, we can contact Dr. Flake and Dr. Kendra about this. Just a very detailed. Yes. <laughs> I, I'd and love to take credit. <laughs> <laughs> I inherited most of it, too. <laughs> Move to approve the updates to the district emergency procedures. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, next we have the bus routes for 2018-2019. Um, Mr. Jokers brought the maps by. I think there's somewhere down here. Someone has them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so those are the maps of all the routes in the county. Um, he also, in your board packet, provided a letter uh, with some information and an attachment to that letter that showed that we had three routes that increased in mileage, the miles that they're driving to pick up students, and we had two routes decrease, and both of those decreases were for our early childhood special education program buses. <clears throat> So, and unless you have any questions, I would recommend that you approve these routes for the 2018-19 school year. I'll move to approve the bus routes for the 2018-19 school year as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, next 
we have an instructional program presentation. Yes, and I'm excited tonight. We have the high school music program. So, who would like to go first? You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my name is John Mooney. I'm the uh, instrumental music teacher at St. Mary High School. Um, just kind of an overview of, of what we do. Um, I have kind of some different sections of things that I do. Um, band, we have our band class, uh, which meets first hour. Um, we have this year 79 students enrolled in that class, which is a good number for us. Um, uh, the first portion of the year spent doing marching band activities. Once the football season comes to conclusion, we begin preparing for various concerts and things like that, um, all the while preparing students for all district auditions and all state auditions and solo and ensemble festivals, as well as um, we're working already with some students towards college uh, auditions for some things. I have uh, some students that are interested in, in playing once they go on to college and some uh, being majors once they do that. So. That's uh, always a good uh, thing to help them out and, and to get them prepared for that kind of thing. So, um, and then the second component of the, the band uh, part of my day is jazz band, which is a class that meets seventh hour. Uh, this is a smaller group. Uh, there's 16 students in that class and we perform uh, traditional jazz, modern jazz, uh, sometimes pop tunes, things like that. Um, that class also functions as the basketball pep band during basketball season. So we play at uh, 10 home varsity games, five uh, boys games, five girls games, um, and you know, play Star Spangled Banner and uh, uh, Hip to be Square or Land of Thousand Dances or you know, whatever the situation calls for, uh, pep band kind of stuff like that. And then we also prepare in the spring that the uh, jazz band goes off to a jazz festival or two and gets to work with uh, college uh, jazz professors and things like that. So. Um, kind of the other, I'm excited about this other part, um, it's, it's, it's still relatively new and I, I, I like how it's grown is our guitar program at the high school and I think a lot of the reason it's grown has to do with the guitar instruction they're getting at the right. elementary school so they're, they're getting that bug in fifth grade and then um, in the middle school now they've got some guitar lead groups and things like that and then they get up to me in high school. And so this year I have uh, two sections of Guitar One, which is really designed for, for very beginning guitar. Um, and then we're also able to offer uh, Guitar Two. So uh, it's a semester class. So if a student um, is not, for example, a band or a choir student, but they're gonna need a fine art credit to graduate, they can take a year long of guitar uh, and get their fine art credit that way, which is really neat and it's, it's been fun uh, for me, and um, the kids have really taken off with it, and a lot there's been a lot of interest in it, so it's, it's a neat part of the, the day. Um, and then the other uh, final component of my day is my uh, Fundamentals of Music class, which is a year-long, um, what we refer to as general music uh, class, and it's for, um, you know, it's for any, any student that, uh, I tend to get the ones that need the fine art credits there to graduate as well, because that's what it's, I think the class is designed for. Um, and we go through uh, music history from the very beginnings, early times, um, up until now, and uh, just kind of the basics of how music is written and, and things like that. Um, we're also able to offer um, occasionally a music theory class, which is really designed for students that are going to be music majors in college, because one of the most difficult classes you take as a freshman music major is those music theory classes and so um, being able to get those kids a head start on that uh, has been a big help for, for them, those who have to go on to, to study music at the college level. Anybody have any questions? I love the part about that, the guitar. When you, and especially when you said it comes from the good school. It, it helps. You know, the kids are like, oh yeah, I remember doing this with Mr. Kingery back in fifth grade. And um, it's, it's, it's been good. And he, he was doing a program too where he would give a, a student a guitar. And so I get the kids that, hey, this is the guitar I got from Mr. Kingery. And they're playing it in, in class as freshmen now. So it's. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am Michelle Jokerst, and I teach both middle school and high school choirs. So um, I only have three high school classes. 
Um, I have Concert Choir, which is a ninth through 12th grade auditioned class. So um, in that class, it's kind of a beginning choir class where I prepare them for chorale, which is the more advanced choir class. Both classes do have the opportunity to participate in all district choir. Um, we will actually be going next week. We prepare the students in sight singing, and they have to learn a song in Italian. And we go to Hillsborough, and we we're with all the other East Central District schools, and um, we audition and see how many we make. Last year we had the most ever, which was five, and we actually had um, our first ever All-State student, Ian Schmidt, which, well, first in over 30 years, so we were pretty excited about that. Um, so we have All-District Choir, we have to participate in All-State Choir. Um, we also have our Christmas concert, where we have performing a lot of the Christmas walk festivities around town, um, particularly the lighting of the Christmas tree um, at the Visitors Interpretive Center, I think is what it's called. Yeah. It has a couple names. <laughs> um, and then in the past, we've participated with the Muni Band on the Sunday at the St. John Catholic Church. This year, unfortunately, the city moved the performance to the second weekend, and so that's actually our Christmas concert. So we're not going to be able to participate this year because with the PAC and everything, there's no other dates. So we're not going to be able to participate for the first time in, this is my 16th year teaching. So first time in 16 years, we won't be able to participate in the performance at the church. Um, so we're a little upset about that, but next year. Um, let's see. Um, in the second semester, we have um, solo and ensemble that we participate in, and then of course our spring concert, which is our pops concert, and um, you know we just try to get our get our students out in the community to perform for many different events. Um, I also teach show choir, and the show choir we have our big festival festival in the springtime. Um, it, we've kind of alternated back and forth between fall. We've tried to host the performance, well, it's with all of the AAA area, area schools. Um, we've tried it in the fall, which is usually early October, and we've, we've come to the realization that's just too soon to have it. So we've gone back to February, so we're battling the um, snow and ice, so hopefully we won't have issues with that this year. So we'll, we'll see how, we'll see how that, that goes. Um, we have a lot of fun in the choir classes, and you know, the, the students that I have in high school are typically students that I've had since sixth grade and just continue to carry on through the program, so. And we, I also, we also, I forget to say this, but um, every other year, we usually do some type of trip. Last year we went to Disney World, and we thank you all for approving those trips, whether it's Gatlinburg, Tennessee, Disney, Chicago, you know, we really like to have those experiences of competing or performing in other states. So we appreciate that. I think I've talked to you both in the years past. I hate to hear that about the Christmas concert, mm -hmm. but the, when the two of you come together and sing and play at the same time in the church in front of the whole community is one of the best times of the year. So mm -hmm. thank you for that. I enjoy it. And I don't know. I didn't vote to change it. Yeah. I, don't know that. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know who changed it, but so the, the Christmas walk is the second. It's the second, it's the second week. Because weekend Because the this first year. weekend is the first and second, I think maybe. It is. Yeah, it's Saturday because we had that same thing. Cause we always right. have our. I don't know if that if, if Annette decided to. I don't know, but they but it, they said it's uh, supposed to be the first full weekend. Which Saturday and Sunday I would have thought was the first one, but they count Friday. Either right. way, it's always yeah. spectacular. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Now you guys know why this part is so special to us. The, the principal reports, then hearing from you guys, it's it's amazing. What a wonderful board board meetings that to hear all this good stuff from all of you. You don't have to do all your performances in a 1934 gymnasium. Right. <laughs> <laughs> every uh, every year when other schools and other directors and things come through, they, they walk in and they're just like <laughs> amazed and blown yes. away it's by that part, it's part of the camps, you know, we're out with them, and it's one of the kids in our community. And I did forget to mention that we are actually hosting all district choir here at St. Jim this year, which is... No, it's November 16th or 17th, whatever that Saturday is. So, all the should will be at St. Genevieve. Yeah, I think we're hosting 
the conference band too this year, I believe. Well, that's awesome. Thank that's you. Great. Hey, Martha said it already, but whether it's the facilities and the concert or a leader in me or the teacher recognition, there's a lot of positives. So thank you all so very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that, we'll move on to the new business, and that's the assessment. And again, that's Dr. Taylor. <laughs> and again, there's a very strong foundation. <laughs> um, we did have uh, one addition, which I'll talk about in just a second. If you turn to the second page, um, that gives you an overview of what's contained in the document. Um, guidelines for dealing with students with special needs, guidelines for professional development, test taking strategies, test security, motivating students to do well. Um, that's all contained in the document. Uh, if you'll turn to page six, that starts a list <coughs> of standardized achievement and ability testing. Um, and if you look at page six, page seven, and page eight, you would think that maybe that's all we do is test students <laughs> because that's a lot of testing. Um, we did have one addition. That's the uh, NAEP, which is the National Assessment of Educational Progress. Uh, that's a congressional mandated test. Uh, they contacted us, so we will be giving that. That test is given in fourth, eighth, and twelfth grade. Um, so I know Mr. Draper, I've talked to already, uh, is in the process of, of coordinating that. Um, for the eighth graders, are we giving it? Did you get contacted about twelfth grade? I did not. Okay, so I believe it's just in eighth grade uh, we'll be giving it this year. Um, that's done for the United States Department of Education. Um, and it's conducted by the National Career for Educational, National Center for Educational Statistics. So that's a new one we had to add to our plate this year. Dr. Fleeg and I were talking about some of the other testing type things we do, which are more screenings. Uh, they added the dyslexia screening this year. Uh, there's the scoliosis screening by the PE teachers. Um, as I continue to think about that, I think that might be a this is an assessment plan and those are screening. So they're, they're distinctly different, but I think that might be a good section to add uh, maybe next year, just so we have an idea of an all-encompassing picture of what we're actually screening or testing our kids on. So um, if you have any questions on that, I'd be happy to entertain those. Happy to see this still the ACT for all the will continue to provide that because as mm -hmm. Mr. Haney surveyed his staff last year they feel very strong with it. So that's that's our plan. Good. Move to approve the assessment plan and update the testing schedule. Second. Okay. Motion and second. All in favor of the I move that the Board of Education hold a closed meeting with a closed record and a closed vote following the regular open meeting on October 16, 2018 to be held in the RW Thomas Library, 715 Washington Street, St. Henry, Missouri, for the purpose of discussing and voting upon the following items of business. Legal action, causes of action, or litigation. Lease, purchase, or sale of real estate. Hiring, firing, disciplining, or promoting protective employees. Proceedings involving the mental or physical health of an identifiable individual. Scholastic probation, expulsion, or graduation of identifiable individuals. Testing and examination materials. Welfare cases of identifiable individuals. Preparation for negotiation with employee groups. Software code for electronic data processing and documentation thereof. Specification for competitive bidding until approved or published. Sealed bids and related documents until the bids are open. Sealed proposals and related documents until all proposals are rejected. Or any documents related to negotiated contract until the contract is executed. Individually identifiable personnel records. Performance ratings are records pertaining to employees or applicants for employment. Records pr protected from disclosure by law. Scientific and technological innovations in which the owner has a proprietary interest. Records relating to municipal hotlines established for the report of abuse and wrongdoing. Confidential or privileged communication with an auditor. Operational guidelines, policies, and specific response plans for preventing or responding to a critical incident. Existing or proposed security systems and structural plans of district property. The portion of records that identify security systems or access codes. Records identified would allow unauthorized access to 
for unlawful disruption of the configuration components or operation of the computer, computer system, computer network, or telecommunication network. Credit card numbers, personal identification numbers, digital certificates, physical and virtual keys, access codes, or authorization codes are used to protect electronic transactions. I further move that notice of this meeting and this tentative agenda be posted as required by law. Second. And motion to second roll call, Eric Bosley? Yes. Dave Bova? Yes. Helen Hook? Yes. Jim Kircher? Yes. Karen McGinn? Yes. Martha Leeson? Yes. Richard Rudolph? Yes. Motion carries, 7-0. Let's go to a closed session, a closed record, and a closed vote after a short break. Second. The motion and second. All right.